Let's imagine we had a switch that could extend our lives. Sounds tempting, right? Many believe they had found this switch in fasting. But what if we told you that some leading experts in this field have changed their minds? Today, we dive into the fascinating world of fasting and longevity. Remember, a few years ago, intermittent fasting seemed to be the holy grail of health. Studies on rodents showed impressive results. Weight loss, improved blood sugar control, and even longer lifespans, all achieved simply by restricting eating times. No wonder many of us were excited. But here's the catch. We are not rodents. What works for mice doesn't necessarily apply to us. And that's exactly what recent studies on humans have shown. Initially, the results looked promising. Meta-analyses suggested that time-restricted eating led to greater weight loss and better blood sugar levels. However, upon closer inspection, a crucial error was revealed. The fasting groups were simply consuming fewer calories. When scientists adjusted the calorie intake between the groups, the benefits of fasting vanished as if by magic. A recently published study summed it up. Whether you eat within a 10-hour window or spread your meals throughout the day, as long as the calorie intake remains the same, there's no difference in weight loss or blood sugar levels. Now it gets interesting. When we skip meals, we risk not consuming enough protein. Protein is key for muscle building and maintaining our strength. Imagine we skip dinner. How are we supposed to meet the recommended 0.73 grams of protein per pound of body weight? It's possible, but significantly more challenging. Let's take an example of a person weighing 176 pounds, 80 kilograms. To meet their protein needs, they would need to consume about 283 grams of protein daily. If dinner is skipped, only breakfast and lunch remain to reach this amount. This means each meal must be strategically planned to include protein-rich foods. Additionally, it's important to note that 128 grams of meat does not equal 128 grams of protein. The protein content of the foods must be considered, as not all foods have the same protein content. For instance, 3.5 ounces 100 grams of chicken breast contains about 31 grams of protein, while 3.5 ounces 100 grams of cork provides around 12 grams of protein. To reach the required 283 grams, our 176-pound subject would need to choose a combination of various protein-rich foods. If they eat 5.3 ounces, 150 grams, of chicken breast for lunch, they've already consumed 46 grams of protein. To reach the remaining 82 grams, they could plan for 7 ounces, 200 grams, of Greek yogurt, about 20 grams of protein for breakfast, and 7 ounces, 200 grams of salmon, approximately 50 grams of protein for dinner. Moreover, it's crucial to consider the quality of the protein. High-quality protein sources that contain all essential amino acids are vital for muscle building and recovery. These include not only animal products like meat, fish, and eggs, but also plant-based sources like legumes, nuts, and seeds. A varied diet that includes both animal and plant proteins can help cover all necessary nutrients. Another important aspect is the distribution of protein intake throughout the day. Studies have shown that evenly distributing protein consumption across meals is more effective for building and maintaining muscle mass. It was previously thought that the body could only utilize 0.44 to 0.66 pounds, 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. However, recent research has found that the body can effectively utilize much larger amounts, up to 0.22 pounds, 100 grams per meal. This insight not only promotes muscle growth, but also supports overall health and well-being. Don't worry, there's a practical solution. How about starting the day with a protein-rich meal? This could be a shake, but it doesn't have to be. It's worth considering other protein-rich foods like Greek yogurt, eggs, or lean fish. These options are not only high in protein, but also provide essential nutrients. With this approach, multiple goals can be achieved. The benefits of calorie reduction can be harnessed without neglecting valuable muscle, and at the same time, the metabolism gets the kick it needs in the morning. Here's the key point. With shorter fasting periods, it's less about rigid rules and more about overall calorie intake. The dietary plan can be viewed as a flexible rubber band. It can stretch and contract as long as the calorie target is kept in mind. 
This approach allows for listening to one's body and adapting the diet to individual lifestyles. Some days, a longer fasting period may feel comfortable, while on other days, more energy may be needed throughout the day. The most important thing is not to confine oneself to a rigid structure, but to find a balance that works. It should be remembered, the goal is to feel healthier and more energetic, not to torture oneself. With this flexible approach, the potential benefits of fasting can be enjoyed without feeling overwhelmed. Now let's move on to the more extreme forms of fasting. Multi-day water fasting may sound like the ultimate health boost, but caution is advised. Our body is a masterpiece of adaptation, but it also has its limits. Imagine our liver as a well-stocked energy reservoir. For about 48 hours, it can supply us with energy. But what happens after that? Our body starts looking for other energy sources. And unfortunately, our valuable muscles come into play. But before we jump to conclusions, multi-day fasting can indeed have health benefits. The trick is to approach it correctly. So, how can we harness the positive effects while protecting our muscles? Here's a surprising solution. Light strength training during fasting periods. It may sound counterintuitive, but by giving our muscles a gentle stimulus, we send a clear signal to our body. Hey, we still need these muscles. This can lead to our body preferentially using fat instead of protein for energy. However, caution is warranted. During multi-day fasting, not only muscle preservation matters, our electrolyte balance can also become disrupted. Therefore, we should pay special attention to our mineral intake during fasting. A slight increase in electrolyte intake can work wonders and help us better endure the fasting period. Despite these strategies, multi-day fasting remains a challenge for our body. Regaining lost muscle mass is a lengthy process. Therefore, anyone interested in longer fasting periods should definitely discuss this with their doctor and carefully weigh whether the potential benefits outweigh the risks. So what can we do to achieve our dietary goals? First and foremost, it's advisable to focus on balanced calorie reduction rather than strictly adhering to fixed fasting times. A flexible approach can often be more effective. Additionally, special attention should be paid to protein intake as it plays a crucial role in muscle building and satiety. A protein-rich shake can work wonders here and provide an easy way to meet daily needs. Another important point is to listen to one's body. Everyone is different and some people feel best with a large breakfast and a light dinner. It's important to recognize personal preferences and adjust the diet accordingly. Finally, it's also helpful to experiment with different approaches. By trying things out, one can discover what works best and which dietary style feels most comfortable. By following these practical tips, we can develop a healthy and sustainable diet that fits our lifestyle. Lastly, here's a fascinating tip. If we pay attention to our circadian rhythm and consume most of our calories at breakfast and lunch, an early, light dinner can significantly improve our sleep quality. Everyone can find out for themselves whether this is true, not just with a smartwatch, but simply by noticing how much fitter and more rested they feel the next day. Fasting may not be a miracle cure, but a well-thought-out dietary plan can indeed work wonders. It heavily depends on dietary patterns, and calorie reduction can, according to the latest research, increase our longevity. And flexible fasting that fits our lifestyle can be helpful in achieving this goal. That's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed this installment and learned something new. As always, we wish everyone a long, healthy, and happy life. Until next time.